Hey bees, I'm Marie from Humble Bee and Me. Today I'm going to teach you how to make three different smoothing, skin blurring facial primers that can be used alone or paired with foundation which will glide on like butter over your primed skin. The first one is a simplified dupey riff on the 52 US dollar Yves Saint Laurent Touche Eclat Blur Face Primer. The second formulation includes some extra ingredients for even more skin blurring, and the third one has some great skincare actives for boosting your glow. This video grew out of a patron exclusive video I released last year. If you'd like to help support free formulation education and get access to bonus videos, please consider becoming a patron. Let's begin by taking a look at the ingredients for the product that inspired these formulations. The bulk of the formulation is the first two ingredients, cyclopentasiloxane and dimethicone cross polymer. This is where all of the blurring, pore shrinking, skin texture improving, and smoothing properties come from. If you look at ingredient lists on other blurring primers, you'll see similar ingredients featuring heavily. Cyclopentasiloxane is a silky ultralight silicone that leaves the skin feeling silky, powdery, and divine, and dimethicone cross polymer thickens the cyclopentasiloxane into a gel. Up next, fragrance, which will add a bit of scent to the formulation. And then we've got four different carrier oils. I have to admit, I was a bit surprised to see corn oil in this expensive luxury branded product since it's a pretty cheap oil that's rarely used in skincare products. After those four oils, we've got calcium sodium borosilicate, silica, tin oxide, titanium dioxide, and iron oxide. These are all likely part of the shimmer ingredient, very likely a compound ingredient, the sort of thing that we would buy as a colored mica, even though there's no actual mica in this specific blend. You can see that TKB Trading's Gold Reflex has a very similar ingredient list. And this is the part of the formulation that Sephora describes as light infused pigments. Now let's turn that ingredient list into a formulation. The first thing I'd like to do is figure out where the 1% line. So that's the line in the ingredient list where everything above it is used above 1% and everything below it is used below 1%. This line gives us a good idea of which ingredients are used a lot and which ingredients are just used a little and gives us a great place to start structuring our formulation. For this formulation, I suspect the 1% line is before the fragrance, which is the third ingredient. I read through some product reviews on the Sephora website that mention the scent. It was described as melon-like and quite light. Knowing how potent fragrance oils generally are, I suspect that this product contains 0.1% or less fragrance. Once we cross the 1% line, the order of the ingredients doesn't have to be completely accurate. We just know that it's less than 1%. So with this formulation, we know that 80% of the ingredients on that ingredient list are present at less than 1%. As we can actually see the shimmer in the formulation, We've got a pretty decent idea of how much there is in there. From my experience, 0.1% of that blended sparkle ingredient seems to give approximately the same sparkle density. I'll be using TKB's Gold Reflex, but you can definitely choose something with a smaller particle size if you want more shimmer than sparkle. Either way, 0.1% isn't a lot of sparkle, so don't expect to look like a disco ball when you apply this primer. For the carrier oils, since we are pretty sure that 1% line is before the fragrance, we can be similarly confident. The carrier oils are also included at concentrations below 1%, but they could be present at 0.99% or 0.01% or anything in between. I have to say, I don't really see the point of including four different carrier oils in this formulation when they're obviously used at such low concentrations. I suspect it's to sort of fill out the ingredient list a little bit and give the impression that this product isn't almost entirely silicone and to give them something kind of more friendly, more recognizable to talk about in their marketing. The precise amounts of these carrier oils are impossible to know, so I'm just gonna go ahead and match them to the fragrance and shimmer percentages, which is 0.1% of each. All of that adds up to just 0.6% of the formulation, leaving us 99.4% of the formulation for the cyclopentasiloxane and dimethicone cross polymer. This is almost certainly a compound ingredient. There are 17 ingredients on UL Prospector with this inky. The closest thing I have is TKB trading silicone gel, which is cyclopentasiloxane and dimethicone slash vinyl dimethicone cross polymer. It's not inky identical, but I do have the Yves Saint Laurent product and they feel pretty much the same. If you'd like to learn more about TKB silicone gel, including substitution information, there's an entry on it in the Humble Bee and Me encyclopedia. Since this gelled cyclopentasiloxane ingredient is over 99% of this formulation, you absolutely need it. It doesn't have to be the precise one that TKB trading sells, but you need a gelled cyclopentasiloxane ingredient to make these primers. 
If you don't have it, you're looking at substituting out over 99% of a formulation. So you're very firmly in redevelopment territory. For a cooking metaphor, imagine that this is a recipe for buttered bread. The silicone gel is the bread. If you replace it with anything other than bread, like a potato or a steak, you've made something fundamentally different, even if you keep the butter. So there's our dupe formulation, which is great and all, but I'd like to simplify it a wee bit. I don't want to scent the formulation, so I'm just going to drop the fragrance. I'm also going to use just one carrier oil instead of the four, and I'm gonna bump it up to 1% of that carrier oil. I'm choosing passion fruit oil because it's the fanciest of the four. 1% is still within the realm of possibility because if you take four carrier oils and then you divide that by four, it's a quarter percent and that's still less than 1%, falls below the 1% line. So it's within the realm of possibility. It's probably more than they use, but yeah, so I'm gonna do 1% passion fruit oil. And so this is the first of the three formulations we're going to be making today. You could definitely make one with the four different carrier oils and the fragrance if you wanted to, but this is what we're gonna make right now. So let's get started. We'll be making 10 gram batches of each of these formulations, which is a decent amount of primer. You can always scale up your favorite batch later. Since most of the ingredients are used at pretty low amounts, you're going to need a scale that's accurate to 0.01 grams to make these 10 gram batches. For scale recommendations, please look up Precision Scale in the Humble Bee and Me Encyclopedia. I've recommended some that are pretty inexpensive and work well. For this first formulation, you'll need 9.89 grams silicone gel, 0.1 grams of passion fruit oil, or any other liquid oil that your face loves, and 0.01 grams gold mica. Stir to combine, and that is it. These primers are pretty thick, so I recommend choosing something with a widish mouth if you can. I'm using a five milliliter wand tube from TKB Trading, which was a gift, but then I ended up putting the leftovers in some wee little two dram squeeze bottles with a nozzle cap that I purchased from SKS Packaging, and I think the squeeze tube actually works better than the wand for dispensing the product. If your tube doesn't have a wide enough opening for you to slowly pour the primer in, you'll need to use a syringe or a plastic bag to pipe it in. As always, if you are looking for more information about this formulation, links to places to buy all the ingredients, information on scaling, on shelf life, please make sure you read the totally free partner blog post. It's linked in the description box below. For formulation number two, I really wanted to play up the glow and blur properties of the primer. I increased the mica to 0.3% and chose TKB Trading's Travel to Neptune. It's a really fine, low micron mica that color shifts from silver to turquoise blue violet for a really intriguing glow. And again, you can use something different if you want, just have some fun with it. I added 0.3% silica microspheres for a bit more blurring. Make sure you are wearing your dust mask while working with this ingredient in its dry form as it's very floaty and easy to inhale. The silica microspheres also make this formulation a little bit thicker than the other two. And lastly, I increased the oil content to 3%, choosing argan oil for this formulation because I love it. You can use more oil if you want, but keep it to less than 10%, or it can split from the silicone gel. All that leaves 96.4% silicone gel to total 100%, and we're off to the races. To make formulation number two, combine 9.64 grams silicone gel, 0.03 grams mica, 0.03 grams silica microspheres, and 0.3 grams argan oil. Stir, package it up, and that is it for the extra glowy riff. Our last riff focuses on adding some awesome skincare benefits. So in addition to the smoothing and blurring that we get, I've also added some soothing and some glow boosting ingredients. I feel like these additions really make this primer more of a luxury product. I've added 3% tetrahexyl decal ascorbate, an oil soluble stable form of vitamin C. Mine was a gift from Simply Ingredients. At this level, it has been shown to reduce UV-induced pigmentation and increase collagen synthesis. For the carrier oil, I've chosen 2% ultralight, vitamin-rich rosehip oil, and I've also added half a percent of bisabolol for skin-soothing benefits and 1% to cofferol acetate for even more antioxidant awesomeness. I've opted for 0.1% of a pinky mica for this formulation, but you could absolutely choose anything that you think will complement your complexion. So to make this formulation, combine 9.34 grams silicone gel, 0.3 grams oil-soluble vitamin C, 0.2 grams rosehip oil, 
0.05 grams bisabolol, 0.1 grams tocopherol acetate, and 0.01 grams mica of choice. Stir until uniform, package it up, and you are done. To use this primer, smooth it over your skin after you've wrapped up your skincare routine. I'm applying the gold one on my forehead, the pinky glowy one on one cheek, and the Neptune-y color shifty glowy one on the other cheek. You can see that none of them have a ton of sparkle to them and I don't look like an alien on the side with the Neptune color shifting mica, but they add a lovely glow and make my skin look really smooth. You can wear them on their own or you can apply some foundation over top. The foundation I'm using here is my transfer resistant cream foundation. You can also blend the primer with a bit of concealer or some mineral makeup in your palm to create a quick light foundation. Since these primers are made up almost entirely of very stable silicone gel, they should easily last a year or three. If you would like to learn how to make the transfer resistant cream foundation I'm wearing in this video, click here. And if you'd like to learn how to make your very own cream eyeshadows, click here. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.